got the fan out we feeling funky fresh today disco balls are out we are moving we are grooving you know it's it's just a good vibe today it is a good, good vibe today vibe. good vibe today and welcome to the cup the currently unnamed podcast where we put the tea in reality and you can always come here first to quench your reality thirst I am your girl, Lana, your resident diva, here to give the tea, spill the tea, and of course, I love me some good tea, so if you have that tea, hit me up, you know what I'm saying? Um, and today, I am drinking punch out of a red solo cup. I have some leftover punch from Thanksgiving that my beautiful sister made that was delicious, wow. and so... I had to drink it again because it was so good yesterday and yes. it's good today. So I'm drinking some fabulous punch my sister made. We love a homemade punch, genuinely. Don't, don't we? Don't we? We do. We do. And I'm Logan Murphy, a Say Something Gay. Gay, here with my favorite Gatorade flavor, which is lime and cucumber. Love that for you. Yes. I've got water as well, but, you know, there's always water happening. There's always water. Hydration. Ugh. And we are here talking about Survivor, episode 10. <sighs> this was... Yeah. This was an episode of television. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I found myself, and I don't know if you'll agree, probably, because we, we think very similarly... Um, I found myself going back and forth on so many different people in this episode. I was like, wait, I like you. Wait, I don't like you. Wait, what are you doing? Wait, what's happening? Like, it was Mm -hmm. all over the place. Yes. I definitely had a mixture of people I liked and people who have surprised me. People who I was not fans of before. Maybe stepping up a little bit. We'll talk about it. I think we'll be on the same page of what we liked and who we were impressed by this week in this episode. I think so. I think so. So let's get started, I say. Um, Sure. We come back from Tribal where this double just happened and everybody's Mm -hmm. like, good job, everybody. Great Mm -hmm. job. We did what we wanted to do. Got out these big threats. Mm -hmm. Yada, yada, yada. And um, then the other group comes in and they join. Everybody's, you know, like, uh, Cassie's here. And wait, Carla at first is like, Carla's like, yeah, I'm I'm glad we were all on the same team. Um, And, you know, Noel was like, yeah, we didn't weren't trying to leave anybody out of votes or whatever, but mm-hmm. Sammy was like, she was like, oh no, Sammy told me like right before the vote, so I was glad that we could all get on the same page. And this is the first time that Carla is saying, you know, I am this is the first time that I've been intentionally left out of a vote mm-hmm. and I don't know how to feel about this. Mm-hmm. She did not like that feeling. And Noelle yeah. was on the other hand, like, we, I don't like that Sammy even told Carlo. Why would Sammy even say anything to her about it? She, it wasn't like he was in the minority. He was in the majority. I don't even understand. I don't understand. Yeah. And so she really wanted Carla to be completely left out of this vote mm-hmm. and be the only person to vote for James, which will show that Carla is not with them and that mm-hmm. they will. Yeah. So Noelle was very upset with uh, Sammy. As we Noelle. saw throughout the rest of the episode. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Now, what I found interesting is when the second group comes back, Carla immediately goes, Cassidy? Now, I'm pretty sure Carla had in her mind that Cassidy was getting voted out. And so was like confirming with the group, Cassidy? And then Cassidy's like, hey. <laughs> and I couldn't tell whether that was like, Carla thinking that Cassidy was going home or Carla making sure Cassidy was still here. Yeah, I was thinking it was the, the latter. I thought it was okay. Carla was like Cassidy looking for Cassidy and Cassidy was mm-hmm. like, whew, good because we just got rid of James. I don't want to lose Cassidy too. So I think yeah. that's what that's what I took. Sure. Sure, sure. It sure. could be either. I think it could be either. It could be either. Yeah, definitely. Um, We see the remnants of whatever the majority was, which is no longer kind of grouping off, trying to figure out what happened. You know, Ryan was the easy vote. So a lot of people are talking about, you know, the move against James. Why did it happen? Why did it happen when it did? Um, Yeah. And that kind of just like prompts the rest of the episode where like nobody really trusts anybody anymore. And we're back to, you know, the patterns that we've seen of the last couple of seasons where we're more so in voting blocks, if anything, than we are, you know, a majority alliance. Right. Right. It was very much like nobody, like I said, nobody trusts anybody. Everybody was trying to figure out what was happening, but it was nothing like the, like the last few episodes where the majority was like very much in control. It was just like, who do I have? Which mm-hmm. person is it? Somebody I could trust enough, not trust completely, mm-hmm. just trust enough to go with this vote. So that was all over the place. So we go to the next day. It's a reward. There's a reward challenge, Lana. A reward yeah. challenge. Yeah. In a 26 days, there's a reward challenge. On day 19. Yeah. We have to throw those rewards in there somehow, I guess. I guess. They decided to do a reward challenge on day 19. And so they had to take this, uh, go across a ballot. Well, no. So they had to spin themselves oh, yeah, in this yeah. contraption to wind up a buoy, and then you're dizzy. So then the logical things to do is you have to run across a net, and then the other logical thing to do is go across a balance beam, pick up a sandbag, go across, and then you've got, like, a few knots to untie, which I thought was kind of dumb, Pointless, I'm going to be honest. Yeah. And then the whole point is you have to take your sandbag and throw it on top of this very tall pole. Very tall pole, yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the people that you thought would do well in this challenge did well in this challenge very early on. Um, The Cody, the Jesse, the Cassidy. Cassidy was really doing well. She was killing it. I was like, this is who I thought she was. This is the girl I thought you were, and I'm happy to see it. Um, but yeah, so everyone pretty much gets across. Noel is struggling. Gabler is struggling. Noel is really struggling. And again, I ask why, and I don't want this entire season to be like specifically catered for the fact that Noel only has one leg. But like, who thought it was smart to put a balance beam on a season with a girl with one leg? I don't know. I don't either. I don't know who thought it was a good idea. No. To do that. But you know what I you know what I do think is a good idea? A I special guest that idea. just popped in. I love hi. Oh in. hi. Oh hi. I love Welcome. Guests popping in. Thank you. Uh, for those of you that don't know, it is I, Anissa Long, also known as Sam DMV, also known as Sam Dawn Verde, your fellow friendly 5'3", trans non-binary Filipino-Canadian hot mess, uh, mentally unstable hot mess, hailing all the way from Toronto. 
Ontario, Canada, Scarborough, be specific. And today we got some vodka mud shake, vanilla flavored. Lovely. Oh. Lovely oh, gal. Oh, we're getting for real, Anissa, tonight. Oh, oh good. <laughs> yep. Love it. We love to see it. Well, we're just talking about the reward. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. The struggles. Um, the, the struggles. The struggles were real in this. The struggle bus. Was. Noelle driving the struggle bus. Yeah. Gabler's, Gabler's on the tail holding on to the struggle bus. Uh, but he yeah. eventually gets off. Um, and yeah, so everyone is throwing their sandbag. And Noelle is still getting across this this balance beam. And then she gets the sandbag and she falls off. And then she gets it. And then she goes across. And then in two throws, Noelle wins the challenge. I was so happy. I was so happy. The quickest I, behind I've ever seen. Literally, I was like, this is a great moment. Like, yes. It is. yes. Um, has everything she is everything that she's done on this season been great and lovely and wonderful? No. Am I happy to see her get an individual win? Absolutely. Um, and you know, on a reward challenge of all things, which we were talking about, you know, there haven't been that many. <laughs> I personally am like, good for her to win this reward challenge. I would rather her win the reward challenge. Then her win the immunity challenge. I think my thing is breaking up. I'm sure it's buzzing in my ear. Mm, that's fine. It's fine. Okay, but um, I would rather Noelle win the reward challenge than the immunity challenge because I don't want her to win immunity. Look, I'm not held back about how I feel about Noelle. I think she's a lovely human being as a, a very role model of, of a person as as far as being disabled, doing these things on Survivor with her one leg. That's incredible. But do I like Noelle on the show, her character that she's portraying? Not exactly. Not a fan. I think she does too much. I think she's, this these latter episodes, I feel like she's doing, she's trying to do stuff for TV. And, and I get it. I get it. You know, you're on TV. You need to be entertaining. Entertain. But I find it disrespectful. I think some of her stuff is just rude. I think she's not, mm -hmm. her in her perspective on trying to entertain and be something extra for TV is comes mm -hmm. off rude and mm -hmm. mean and spiteful even. So mm -hmm. good for her for doing a, a challenge that was very much suited against her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm very much not for her and she went through it and she succeeded and everybody with a disability myself included is mm -hmm. like i can do anything mm -hmm. i push my mind to do it i just have to push to do it so kudos to her for doing that i have nothing but respect for her for pushing through that challenge and doing it and to mm -hmm. do it so like everybody counted her out everybody was counting her out because i'm like one of them go knock that thing up there just like that. And I thought like, Carla oh, was going to get I it. Thought... Carla was getting it. She kept on Me hitting too. that, that I... the top. Like, Sammy. Four... I thought Sammy had it once. Sammy, yeah. Sammy had, Sammy I thought it. Sammy had it as well. Um, but, <sighs> yeah, but, but that you know, doesn't was... happen. <laughs> she busted out with two tries and was like, whoop, bam. I was like, yeah. Oh, girl. Yeah, I think I agree with a lot of what you said, Lana. And we talked about it last week, and I do agree. I think Noelle, the person, is fantastic and wonderful and lovely. I think Noelle, the, the character and the game player, I'm just not... I'm not really the biggest fan of her and at least the way she's being edited. Let's say that. The yeah. character of Noelle on this show, I don't particularly love. But I do follow her on socials, and I, what she what she does, and all of that, I think is lovely. But the character, it's not my favorite. But so she she wins. She gets to go to the sanctuary. Ooh. We finally did. Is this the first time we've gotten a name for this place? They actually for them to actually have it on the thing, a sign. Uh -huh. the yeah, they, they. But I feel like they've always called it the sanctuary. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't remember. 
Yeah, I think they called okay. it the sanctuary, but we never got a sign that said sanctuary. Sure. Sanctuary. Sure. <laughs> and so she gets, you know, food, uh, a bed, letters from home, which, I mean, on a season where there's presumably no family visits, incredibly appreciated, appreciated on their part. And she gets to pick three people to go with. And she picks Jesse, Sammy, and Owen. And to my knowledge, Owen was the only person that hadn't had a reward up to that point. Yep, he hadn't eaten. Yeah. So it was nice of her to do that for him. I mean, as her third pick, though. I mean, yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, okay. This is me. I hate the women in this season. I can't stand the women in this season for how they're acting to each other. As a mm-hmm. woman, mm. I am just like so disgusted with how the women are treating mm-hmm. each other. Like we are very much dismissive of other women. We are casually kicking them off one by one. We don't care if we send them mm-hmm. home. We don't take them on the boards. We don't acknowledge it. And they're the first people we tend to turn away from the second something goes wrong or the second we get some kind of power. I don't like this in the women in this season. I, mm-hmm. I, I hate it. And like, they all started out so strong. Like, I was very excited for the women in the season at the beginning of the season. They were all like, yes, let's get together. Let's group together. Let's do this. But the second something goes wrong, none of them have a problem picking each other off. None of them have a problem not yeah. taking them on the, on the reward. None of them have a problem doing uh uh, coming after them like verbally like you are my target and I want yeah. her gone so it's like I'm very disappointed in the women of this season I am can't yeah. even lie well and the only person that's really said anything about you know women going after other women or women like getting voted out is Cassidy Cassidy only one and that's and that it's like saddens me yeah yeah, because then they're at the sanctuary, and Noelle's like, I want to target Cassidy. And Carla. And split them up, Carla. And then well, the difficulty for me is everyone's, like, there were multiple people on this reward that were like, okay, we need to target the strategic threats. Cassidy and Carla? Well, Carla, I can understand. But Cassidy, I, like, I'm seeing it. Because I think we're seeing the whole edit, and I see the way Cassidy's playing. However, like, I... The fact that Noelle doesn't even bother in at any point that we see to be like, hmm, maybe Cody and Jesse are incredibly strategic threats. Like, if I had to name the strategic threat of the season right now at Final Eight, it's Cody. I think Cody's playing a phenomenal game, and I'm going to be honest, I'm pretty sure Cody's going to win at this point. It's Cody or Jesse. They, yeah, I I was thinking about it, too. I feel like it is one of them going to make the final three. And- I'm going to tell you who my three. Uh, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you who, my, my, who I think is going to be the three. It is going mm-hmm. to be Cody, Jesse, and Gabler. Yeah. Because the way they plan, and we said earlier how some people shocked us this, this, this episode. You know who shocked me the most, who I never thought I'd say? is Gabler. Gabler, Gabler. is playing a phenomenal game at, I at, agree. This, at this point. Like, nobody is talking about Gabler. Everybody yeah. wants to work with Gabler. Cody yeah. and Jesse got Gabler locked down and they because they think they can beat him in the end. But yeah. Gabler has a story yeah. that yeah. outshines yeah. both of them. If yep. he plays it correctly throughout the rest of the thing, I'm and not to mention Gabler is the one who clocked Cody and Jesse as being strategic threats in this game. We'll talk about that later, but that we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll talk about it. This this man is playing a phenomenal game, and people don't even see it yeah. happening right under their nose. And if he keeps doing what he's doing and keep letting people think Gabe was the yeah. wild card, Gabe was crazy, Gabe, when he get to that final three, mm-hmm. he can shut them all down with what he got to say. And, and and we know he's it. and we know he's enough of a super fan. He studied final tribal speeches. We know that to be oh yeah a 
fact. Like, I, honestly, at this point, if Gabler wins the season, I wouldn't be thoroughly disappointed. And I am really surprised that I'm saying that because I really did not like him. I mean, and I, I don't hoping. love him. He's not my first or second choice. But he's Maybe growing. my third. He's Maybe growing. my third. Yeah, but he's good. I think he's, but just he's good. Yeah. Phenomenal game. He's just yeah. one of those games that you like. I see, like, he <clears> is <throat> like Kevin was and BB Cam for me. Not uh -huh. my favorite person. Was not rooting for him. Did not mm -hmm. care for him. But as the season progressed, I'm like, this man is good. Y'all keep letting him fly by. This man is good. And then he ended up killing his, uh, his finale speech which earned and I think deserved that win. I'm like, this man played y'all from beginning all the way to the end. Gabler is yep. playing these people from beginning and possibly to the end if they keep letting them. But, yeah. Love it. So, yeah, I mean, they're at the sanctuary. Yeah. yeah, they're at the sanctuary getting their letters and talking about splitting the votes between Carla and, and, and Cassidy. While the four back at camp are like, what are we trying to do here? What's happening? Because Cody, who I agree is playing also a great game, is like, you know, when you're full and you're eating, you tend to chalk more and be more chatty. But when you're hungry and grumpy, you don't, you tend to keep to yourself. And that's what's happening right now. So he's trying to initiate these conversations and they are talking. And Cassidy is very much like Noelle is a threat. We can't sit next to her in the end, which is yeah. true because if you sit next to Noelle at the end, her story is outshining everything you could have done that entire game, period. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and so it was very smart for Noelle to pick that up. And at this point in the game, yeah, I, I like, as much as I said I'm disappointed in the women for not even trying to work together, at some point you got to stop. And Noelle is very much of a threat. I wouldn't want to sit next to Noelle in the end because Noelle, her story outshines anything you could possibly mm -hmm. ever do in this game. It don't matter how many immunity items you win. If she wins once, her story is going to outshine yours. And it's just possible she's shown that she can win competition. So I wasn't mad at the fact that Cassidy was like, yeah, Noelle is a threat. She got to go. Mm -hmm. And they seem to agree with that. Cody was like, mm -hmm. sure. But he also knows where his placement is. Like, he knows he's mm -hmm. working with Jesse and he's working with Noel. And so he's like, I don't, uh, you know, yeah. It's, yeah. it's different. So, so then yeah. I think we also get Sammy's name thrown out within the four at campus mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it, just in case, like, we missed it, because I know it was thrown out at the beginning of the episode <laughs> as well. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Sammy, so Sam, Sammy's name was thrown out because Sammy couldn't be trusted. Noel didn't like how he flip flops. He said, "If anybody's gonna flip on us, it's gonna be Sammy because he flip flops, flip flops." We've seen it, which he does. I'm like, that's the yeah. flaw in Sammy's game. I thought Sammy was playing a really strong game, but that's the flaw in his game. He's shown that he's not reliable. That he will be. He's able to flip when he feels like his back is against the wall. So he, I, I don't know. I think. That's his flaw. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. other than that, the name like everybody's name is getting thrown out except Gabler, Jesse, and Cody. Yeah. How is that even possible? I do not know. But those are the only three days that has not even come up and been mentioned in anybody's conversation. Mm -hmm. Gabriel is like, we'll wait to after the challenge to see what we're gonna do, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And he said, But so far, this is a solid plan. So yeah, challenge happens. Challenge happens, and what you have to do is hold a bar on a balancing thing and keep mm -hmm. it balanced. And you have to build a house of cards, a house of cards up high enough to reach the finishing arrow. And this thing is kind of tall. I yeah, mean, it's kind of tall. It's a, tall. Cla a classic challenge. It's a, a classic. classic challenge. See, I think of when I think of this challenge, I immediately think of Sophie. Yep. From South Pacific. Oh, please, drop your stack. Drop your stack. Pick up mine. Like it's 
Uh, Sophie's one of my favorite winners. So like anything Sophie does, I'm just like, yes. Um, and this challenge, we got a good old survivor crossfade. They're like, no one's getting it. No one's getting it. No one's getting it. No one's getting it. Blah, 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 blah. I'm just showing card after mm -hmm. card after cards. It was actually kind of funny. <laughs> I, I love when we get the Survivor Crossfade, and now there's two this season. Because we yeah. got it in the first challenge when Gabler wouldn't shut up. Um, and then now we're getting it here. Um, but it comes down to... Pretty much comes down to Sammy, Carla, and Cassidy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's then pretty much what it comes down to. Yeah, then Carla dropped. And it just really is just Sammy yeah. and I remember seeing Cassidy. Noel... Um, pop into there a yeah. couple of times. Yeah, Owen was there for a couple of times. Owen was there for a couple Owen of times. Owen was there, yeah. I thought Cassidy, I don't know what y'all thought, I thought Cassidy had a really smart strategy towards the end. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because then you just start stacking them horizontally, and then you get mm -hmm. one. And I've never seen that strategy employed. Um, it's probably going to pop up in a Peridium uh, hacked video soon, let's be honest. Because we know he's going to make another one of them. Um, but yeah, I was incredibly impressed, and Cassidy wins well another unique immunity winner. Everybody yep. has different people. I love it. I love to see. So it. now, who's left that hasn't won immunity? Jesse, Jesse, and, and Sammy. Sammy, 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 and Jesse. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, and well. And Noel. But, I mean, yeah. if you if you count the the mergatory, whatever the heck that was. Um, oh, I was just counting individual. Oh, if we're yeah, then Jesse and Sammy. If it's just individual, it's Jesse, Sammy, and Noel. And Noel. So, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we'll talk about that. So Cassidy wins, and Cassidy was the target. So I love. Oops, to see it. we got to come up with another target. And first, first, yeah, first let me say, I was when Cassidy won, I literally was like, Yes, I don't want this girl to go home over some bull nope. job, like, like, not like this. And I think she is one of the fa my favorites, um, this season. And I really do like her, I really did like, I welcome to the club, finally, Lana. <laughs> first of all, there's no finally, I always liked her, that's fair. No, no, there's no finally. I've and always I've liked always her. liked her, unlike what certain people have to say, David Healy. Oh, not my husband. Not I'm me. calling out your husband because he called hold me on. out. Well, he kind of did, but hold on. I would not be a wife if I did not defend my husband. We That's valid. Have, <laughs> we will not have David Slander here on, this, on the cup. We will not. <laughs> But um, that's fine. When he gets here, look, you can talk about it when he gets here. When, when the question is when, when that is now that is I'm, I will take that because I've Thank been asking you. that question. <laughs> when David Healy, I know you're watching. When, but I love yeah. we're back at camp, and this is what makes me think that Jesse has a genuine shot to win. Because not only have we gotten his emotional backstory throughout the season and then in this episode, but he gets he gets um he gets, he gets uh, overlays. He gets overlays yeah. in the episode. It's like his three point plan. And I'm like, okay, so they're not gonna go through all of this editing if he's not a finalist, right? Like either that or he goes like in fire making it forth. Yeah. Or he goes home that episode, but like that would happen. But that did not happen. Yeah. I, I, I look, I love seeing his three point or four point plan come mm -hmm. into fruition. It was like, mm -hmm. hey, first we do this and we, then we do this. And, and it was nice to see it happen. I don't think, I do think mm -hmm. he's going to, he's, they're giving him a winner edit or at least a finalist edit mm -hmm. because like you said they're not going to go through all that work if he's not at least going to be with us for the few more episodes that they do have but yeah. the fact that he secured his space with two different people and then threw Sammy under the bus in front of him just like I don't know but even after all of that Gabler still clocked the both him and Cody 
which I'm like, ooh, and Carla's like, I see the same thing, and I am here for it. Let's figure out what we we'll do. What we go say we go do tonight, mm-hmm. but we my eye, my mm-hmm. eye is on the two of them, and I yeah. love to see it. Yeah, and seven is going to be a really important number next week. Seven is yeah. With Gabler recognizing, hey. These two are a threat, maybe because I'm thinking Carla could pull Sammy and Carla could probably pull Cassidy. And with mm-hmm. Gabler, that's four. Vote one of them out. But here's the caveat in that plan Jesse has two idols in his, yeah. in his hand. He all he needs to do is have one for himself and pass the other one back to Cody. And done and done. Could you imagine yeah. if Or Cody... if like one of them win immunity, then that's like that's even easier for them. They can yeah. save the idol for another day. Mm-hmm. Well, well, I was yep. gonna say the gag, if everybody votes for one of them, they both play idols, they vote for Carla. Carla plays her idol, which we find out in this episode is apparently common knowledge now. Mm-hmm. 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 So I think all of okay. the speculating so, we've been doing for weeks, we finally find out. But Anissa, what were you saying? Yeah, I so with I the kind of common knowledge thing kind of makes sense at this point because mm-hmm. when we first m- get to the m- the mergatory bullshit mm-hmm. whatever, mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> there everyone's talking about like I remember Be- Cody and Janine were talking about like oh the beads the beads the beads and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think those probably in Coco probably found mm-hmm. that out as well and kind of w- was like, oh, Carla. Put two and two together. Carla has an idol. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. just my guess. And we just didn't see it. Um, that's what, And that's what I had been saying. Like, if everybody knows about the beads and if there's mm-hmm. knowledge that Carla got the beads, then everybody knows Carla has an idol. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, I just don't but, know why yeah. we never got any like talk about it. You know, I wish we did. I just, I just want to know when all these idols are just gonna get played at the same tribal, and somebody go get some refilled out of this game because oh. idol after idol after idol is gonna get played, and I'm gonna be like, oops. And I wouldn't even be mad. If, I wouldn't even be mad if it was Gabler because Gabler's the one clocking Cody and Jesse. Wouldn't it be like? insane crazy if Cody, let's say Cody wins immunity, Jesse uses the idol, Carla uses her idol, and the only person to vote is somebody and like a random Jesse, vote on Gabler. Jesse votes for Gabler because it's like he finds out that he's coming for them. And so Jesse votes Gabler, Carla votes Jesse, Cody, it's just all over the place. And Gabler is that one single vote out of there. I would just that feels die. correct. That feels correct. Well, it depends. On, it depends on that second, the that other person too, right? That's in that. Yeah. Because uh-huh. yeah, because the latest they can do idols is final five, right? So yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think it'll be hilarious. But we'll they'll see. have to get used at some point soon, so we'll see. It's, but yeah. you, you, the one person who, well, two people right now who is most accessible to getting caught up in this whole idol switching mm-hmm. room and idol gate would be Cassidy and Gabler. Oh, and Owen. And Owen. People, oh, Cassidy, yeah. Gabler, and Owen would probably get either caught up in that nonsense mm-hmm. and foolishness, but. We still got a couple more episodes before we can get to find five, so anything can happen. We will see. So, yeah, so the plan becomes Carla or Sammy, but then everybody decides last minute, "Mm, let's vote Noelle. Carla says, Carla's like, look, she's coming for me, huh? Well, how Mm -hmm. about her? Carla's mm-hmm. like, because, you know, her story is her story. And mm-hmm. Gabler's like, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, and so Jesse's like, well, let me get to work. And he starts going to work. Mm-hmm. Talking to all these people doing what Jesse do. And he was, he goes to Gabler and like, look, I know we all love Noel. Look, Noel gave me letters mm-hmm. from home. 
I feel like I owe her. It breaks my heart to do this, but I think we need to vote Noelle. And Gabriel's like, who? Let me think about that. Oh and Jesse's like, sure, think about it. But here's some more stuff to tell you why Noelle needs to go. And Gabe was like, makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense for my game. It makes sense for us because none of us sitting next to Noelle in the end is going to win. Makes yeah. sense. And yep. that's when Gabe was like, sure, I'll vote for Noelle. And I believed him when he said it. He was like, I'm going to vote for Noelle. That's what I'm going to do. Because he hasn't been that player who says one thing and flips around and totally do another thing. If he says it in his own camera, he pretty much has done that. So I believed it when he said it, but that was when he clocked Sam, uh, Jesse and Cody in that same breath when he went and talked to Carla. And I was like, oop, oops, oh, Gabler. Yeah, I was like, oh, if this becomes like the last minute change and it becomes the downfall of Jesse. Oh, I was, oh my God, oh my God. I was kind of hoping for that. Not because I don't like Jesse, but just because I thought it would have been like, Amazing it would have been great. See. It would have been such that. good entertainment. Not that this the the blind side wasn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. But just the whole like oh this whole build up of Jesse only to go mm-hmm. boom <laughs> with both of the idols in what his pocket. Both of the idols? <laughs> I would have loved it. I would have loved it, but I would have cried at the same time, like, oh, not two idols getting wasted. Mm-hmm. And literally. Um, just, yeah, literally, but so. it was what it was. Uh, so we go to tribal. It's another tribal. It was. It was a tribal like the same. It's the the US ones are just starting to get stale. I'm gonna be honest. Like there hasn't been a live tribal. There hasn't been anything like dramatic at tribal this season, other than the blind sides themselves. I'm just like, can we have a live tribal, please? This is what I'm talking about. I think last season we had that one good tribal, but it was horrible, but good at the same time. It was mm-hmm. toxic. I mean, it was not the good, you know, how you mm-hmm. wanted to try, but it was dramatic, and yeah. I love to see drama on Survivor. This season, we got nothing. We have had nothing. We, the closest to a storm out was was James last week, yeah. and he was just like, yeah. whatever, whatever, y'all. I'm like, and they found that class list. I'm like, have y'all ever watched Survivor? Like, you ain't seen people going off and blowing up people's entire game before they walk to the back? Like, what? Like, have you never watched Russell Hance? It shows. Like, like, we didn't even really have no big fights this season. Like, Owen and James was the closest. We the fight. Fight. Yep. It was, this season has been And the, ne- the next closest thing that's, like, had any sort of drama was Lindsay spiraling. And that yeah. was stupid. Yeah, and that was just yeah. Crazy. I know but that's like, literally just like the. I'm just pointing out that's the next like most traumatic thing, and even that's not like anything really. I was just I'm very. I like, mean, the there was there was also but, like um the whole Gabler versus Ellie thing. Oh, Janine, oh. Um, Janine mm. Ellie. But, uh, yeah, I guess. Okay, that's considered. It was just this season. But no, no, but even then, like, like that's that's about it. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. I'm ready for some like some real survivor blowout. Some real survivor like live tribal where people nobody has whispered to anybody this entire season. Nobody got up and walked around and it's plan changing. Nothing. Nothing at all. Right. <sighs> I'm so bored. I'm so bored with all of these tribals. I'm not going to lie. Genuinely, I'm going to be real honest. I'm ready for this season to be over, and I'm ready to watch Australian Survivor. Like, uh, I'm, I'm ready. So... I'm ready. And now I can actually say this because she's been officially announced. Period. Nina diaz Quine to... back on my television. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I've been waiting for. And a lot of um, other people, but Nina specifically. Nina Twine, Nina Twine period. Nina is all I care about. Let's I'm very it. excited. But so a vote happens. Uh, yeah. It's five to two to one. 
Noel gets blindsided. Blah, blah, blah. They really amped up this elimination by playing the sad, dramatic music. I was like, yeah, she's like... <sighs> I was like, the sad, dramatic music, I get it. But I'm also like... And then everybody yeah. jumping up and hugging, and we're and they go, we're cool by us, but the whims are starting to go, but the whims are saying, I'm sorry, like, dude, Jesse, own it. You took, you got her, she said you gave a message from your loved ones, and you voted her out the door. It is what it is. You led the charge. Ain't no, oh, I'm so sorry I do that. I ain't sorry. I did what I had to do. Yeah. I saw but, some discourse on Twitter, and I'm interested to see what y'all think about it. Do we think? Do we find Jesse to be a likable villain? I don't think he's a villain. I don't. I don't think, think he's anything. Honestly, I don't, I don't even I know th- what he is. I think he. I could like him. Be. I like him. I think he could be because you know you see like the blindsiding Noel by voting out Justine situation, and then taking Janine's idol. And then, like, this move against Noel, Like, all of them against women. Wow, shocker. Um, But, like, he's been, like, the closest thing to a villain that we've had this season. And, like, I, I do appreciate his gameplay to an extent because it's not, like, it's... It's sly gameplay that we haven't really seen in a in a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would say the last time we saw something like this, honestly, was Denise on Winners at War. Mm. I I mean, I get the sly part. He's definitely sly. He is very much a fox, very much mm-hmm. a, if people want to call him a snake, very much that slippery sure. sly. Yeah. But I don't think he's a snake. I don't think he's a villain villain per se. Like, I think he's just a strategic player. And we haven't... And sometimes people confuse strategic and villain. Like, sure. they, they cold-hearted because they're very strategic. Mm. I think he's very strategic about what he's doing. I don't think he's a villain to the point where it's like like Russell Hans villain. Sure. Like, he's not, oh, like, a person you just love to hate or hate to love. Mm-hmm. He's just... I, I find him... Relatable. Sure. Mm-hmm. But blah, if that makes sense. Like, and I agree with you. I just wanted to bring it up because I saw a lot of people talking about it and I wasn't, I didn't necessarily agree myself, but I agree with what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he's yeah. a villain per se. I just think he's, I don't think he has the personality to be a horrible, like one of the top rated villains in Survivor history. Like, no, no. His, pers- no. no his personality is not that. But I think he's just a good player. And I think mm-hmm. if if he wins this season, he's going to be a, a good, like, a very, I think he would be a top tier winner, like one of, of close to the I'd top. i say like top half. I would yep. top half. Yeah, I don't think he would be like the, the, the uh, on a F scale on the tier. Like, he won't be superior, but I think he might be good. Yeah. Yeah. Anissa, what about you? What do you think about Jesse? Uh, I, I mean, I think I'm very much on that same, like, lane as Lana and, and yourself. Um, Like, I feel like the lines of, especially this season, oh, no. uh, in this, like, latter half, the lines of, like, hero and villain are blurred. Mm-hmm. So it's, to to me, it's just really hard to tell, like, oh, who's the hero, who's villain? Because sure. at this point, like, everyone is actually, has been, like, a bit of both, but also, like, neither. <laughs> and there's not been a lot of people that are very exciting to watch play. Like, right. even as much as I like Carla and as much as I like Cassidy, like, I, I think they're just surrounded by a season of kind of blah, Honestly, yeah. like that's just kind of how I feel about this whole season. It's just like it's fine. It's fine. It's not as it's not as bad as One World. Oh no. But like it will this season end up in my top half? Probably not. Whereas the last two se- 41 and 42 I would put in my top half for sure. But yeah, I mean, we will see. Mm. You know what I don't I think 
41 and 42 with this new format was exciting and the cast mm-hmm. was trying to, you know, not figure it out. With mm-hmm. 43, them being able to watch 41 and 42 and actually know kind of what's going on, I think it kind of just dropped the level of excitement in mm-hmm. the seasons mm-hmm. because they know what to expect. They know what the knowledge of power is. They know what all mm-hmm. these advantages are. They know how to navigate some things. They know what they're going to do on these journeys. Survivor is at the point for me that if they're not going to keep it like the first before they change into these 29 days, then they're going to have to keep changing it every season in order yeah. to do something to keep the excitement level up. Because if you're letting them watch the epi- the seasons before, mm-hmm. it's going to get stale. And this is what's happening right now. It's very much yeah. stale, very much blah, very much mid because yeah. everybody knows what to expect and you're not changing anything. Yeah. Like, this shot in the dark thing, nobody's used it. And it's been brought up once. Once. Once, yep. And nobody's used it. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah. They don't even need to bring that up anymore. You, you know what I'm missing, honestly, and I think it provides a lot of, like, the intertwining dynamics that make especially the post-merge entertaining? I'm missing a pre-merge swap. Yeah, I'm missing a swap because yeah. the swap, like it, it brings different groups of people together, and then when you get to this merge, it's like, oh, this person was my original tribe, but this person was my swapped tribe, and like I've spent more time with this person, but like this other person that I've like been on the swapped tribe with, like we had to work together in order to survive, et cetera, et cetera. So it brings a lot more dynamics, and this all kind of just feels like, oh, people were playing by tribal lines, and then like this random majority formed. And then now that's being split apart. And now it doesn't even exist because two of the whoever was in it is no longer there. And then we just see these three men dominating, but not even because one of them has clocked the other two. Like, it's just like, I agree with you. It feels very, it feels very stale. Yeah. Yeah. I think they need to go back to two, like two original tribes. Like this three breaking down this three tribes of five. It's kind of like, like, let's go back to two tribes. And then you can be able to do a personal, a post merge swap. Mm-hmm. And because you have these two teams, and then if one team is dominating over another, so let's swap mm-hmm. it out and let's even it back up. Then we mm-hmm. have to do some damage. And then you go yeah. into merge and bring everybody together. Yeah. And that way, like you say, it will bring some excitement because of the, mm-hmm. yeah, I was with this person, now I was with this person, but this person. I just think this three tribe thing is a little old now, and they need to let it go. And now I'm afraid for 44. Because if 44 is the same way, I'm a little concerned. Yeah, and it's I, definitely going to be the same way. I've seen some things, allegedly, that say that there's some different things happening for 44. That's all I'm going to say about that. So, nothing is confirmed, but that so we'll see what happens i think we have four more episodes mm-hmm. sounds I think right. it's a 14 episode season yeah that sounds i think right. so i think so yeah. so that'll take us through the end of the year the end of the year yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Woo. Nah. look sam uh anisa feels how we feel about this whole season uh-huh. Uh-huh. very much very much a yawn mm. sorry there was so sorry, much sorry. potential there was so, so much, much potential. But you had to let go of Mariah the first episode. You had to let go of Mariah first? Go of Mariah. And you, Justine, actually. I liked Justine. Could you, imagine, could you imagine the foolishness and the drama Mariah and Justine could have added to this cast at this point of the game? Absolutely. And you know what else I'm blaming? You know what else I'm blaming? No Canadians. No Canadians. Mm-hmm. No, no Canadians. I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. I agree. Will you get? I, there were three Canadians last season, and they provided all the entertainment. And there were and two, two, two other of the season before that also exactly. ate up the game. I'm exactly. Saying, two, we had two Canadian winners. That's why they were scared to bring them back. And this is what we have. We don't have no spice of life. I'm sorry, America. Thank God they didn't cast a woman of color from Canada because she would have gotten voted out first instead of Mariah. Mm, Yeah. She would have ate it up. She would have ate it up. Oh, absolutely. But that's not on that. We'll be back next week. Yep. 
we'll be back. And I'm oh. gonna drink, so we gotta go. I'm also out, <laughs> so. Oh, but y'all know what to do. Mm. Wait, y'all know what to do. Mm. Follow, mm. like, subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Twitter at the cup underscore reality. If we ever get our Twitter back, that'd be great. Um, our Twitter is back. Confirmed. Period. 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 Confirmed. We're back. So follow us. And then if you're cool and you just like following Sam, Logan, and myself, do that. We're here. We're good. People were cool. And um, if you ever said, you know what, I want to talk about a show, be on a podcast. Hit us up on our DMs. Let us know that you want a show. You have a show you want to talk about. We'll be happy to have you. And uh, yeah. So like we said, our drinks are empty. So it's time to go. So Not cheers, mine. y'all. Uh, oh. oh. Oh, well, period. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Bye now. Bye, bye, bye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye, so long for a while. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye. 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 No.